गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीबडी फ्रॉम संचिती हॉस्पिटल एंड हेलिओस आय एम हँडिंग ओवर दिस सेशन टू डॉक्टर सौरभ थँक यू सो मच राहुल हॅलो अँड वेलकम टू टुडेज वेबिनार ऑन इम्पॉर्टन्स ऑफ पल्मनरी रिहॅबिलिटेशन इन कोविड पेशंट अँड अ लाईफ फिजिओथेरपी सेशन विद अ होम क्वारंटीन कोविड पेशंट so now when we all we all are well aware of what covid is and what how it impacts and what symptoms it shows still there is very less awareness of what physiotherapy and how pulmonary rehabilitation plays a role in managing covid symptoms and preventing long term repercussions of covid 19 on your respiratory systems and for that for enlightening us today on the importance of covid rehabilitation we have with us dr razia nagarwala who is a professor and head of the cardio respiratory department of physiotherapy at sanchetti healthcare academy she will be walking us through the importance of pulmonary rehabilitation in post covid management razia ma'am over to you thank you so much for joining us today thank you dr thora for a kind words and a very ha- good morning and happy dashera to everyone so we'll i'll just share my screen okay is it visible yes it is visible yeah. you can do so today as we are uh, going to speak about the covid rehabilitation now what mainly i'm going to cover is post covid rehabilitation means the patient who have already recovered and not only that the patients who are still home quarantine or in isolation they can also work on the same thing so i'm not going much into the covid 19 pathophysiology and all because by now everyone is well educated about all these thing as we say that corona virus is not new it was there it was there something around back 50 years back where it started as a middle east respiratory system syndrome and then in 2003 it was sars which was there and then now in 2019 we get got this new corona virus and this is what it caused was named covid 19 and this uh, started from wuhan china from the sea wood a uh, sea food market and then it transmitted to, to human and it became a pandemic so how it affects finally this once this corona virus when it enters into the host cell that is in the human body it get attached to the as2 receptors and this as2 receptors are very rich in our lungs and that's why mainly we see that it affects the lungs and then once it attach it goes goes into the host cell it starts multiplying and cause the destruction of the alveoli the alveoli are the your gaseous exchange unit in the lungs and that's why the oxygenation goes down and thus the destruction happens what is named as pneumonitis and then it starts spreading it may not only stay there on the lungs but it may also like your when i say as2 receptors they are also present in the kidney and other epithelial cells so in the blood vessels does and the muscles so sometimes it can happen that it's not only the lungs which are getting affected but maybe the kidney also is getting affected and that's cause increase in the creatine the heart that cause myocarditis and sometimes your blood vessels getting affected causing thromboembolism or a bleeding disorders hence this is what we see usually the picture in the x-ray view is in the covid-19 patients where the lung are getting affected causing the pneumonitis with the destructions of the alveoli and when it heals it heals with the fibrosis and does it cause the destruction of the lungs and that's why it may persist leaving the dyspnea and the low oxygen level uh, fortunately yes the cases have reduced when we say the covid 19 you see mild to the severe cases but yeah the death rate is less and we are the one fortunate in india that the death rate was very less in india and as per today's statistics if you see the recovery rate is very high but the death rate is very very low hence we don't need to worry 
but yes one has to work on the exercise part and getting the rehabilitation and going back into the community so the question is is being asymptomatic okay yeah we have many patients or many people who are not showing any symptoms but then they are tested covid positive as we say always the precaution is better and hence the absence of symptoms does not imply the absence of harm so one has to look at the systems their progress how they are feeling and they have to take a precautions maybe a multivitamins to boost their immunity and of course the physical exercise because exercise improves your immunity hence we are emphasizing on exercising so what is rehabilitation a rehabilitation is a set of intervention designed to reduce disability which comes because of the covid-19 manifestation to your different systems and optimize the functioning in individuals with health conditions in the interaction with their environment so the aim of rehabilitation is not only to reduce the disability which is caused by the covid-19 but to improve their functions and take them back to their normal lifestyle so how does this covid-19 affect as i say it it doesn't only affect your respiratory system but it may affects your other organs of the body also so when it affects your lungs what are the symptoms will be the cough breathlessness and hypoxemia hypoxemia is nothing but less oxygen in your blood and that is why we always check with the pulse oximetry which is going to tell you about your spo2 that is the oxygen saturation in the blood with the hemoglobin musculoskeletal system it may cause myalgia that is pain in the muscles fatigue and muscle weakness now this muscle weakness is more seen in the patients who are you know who have been in a long term in the intensive care unit and that is known as icu acquired weakness so in them this will be more pronounced neurologically it may cause neuropathy that is again it's going to cause the weakness of the muscle because the nervous system affection psychological impact is also very high causing anxiety depression and post traumatic stress now this is also one has to tackle by remaining uh, by causing the positiveness why because see the patient may have a isolation and that itself causes lots of anxiety and depression and when the other members of the family is have affected that is again another cause of the depression and anxiety look for the other cardiovascular systems and the renal system also because as we say that covid-19 known to affect the cardiac system also causing myocarditis and all so when you start with a rehabilitation or start the exercise program it's very important that you get the screening done by your physician and get the green signal or the one who is treating the patient should look for this red flag that means the patient spo2 it should not be less than 90% tachycardia that is increase in the heart rate arrhythmias the rhythm of the heart tachypnea that is increase in the respiratory rate confused and uh, confusion and uh, altered sensorium that tells you mainly about your central nervous system and thromboembolism that is a bleed bleeding disorders so one has to screen for this red flags before we start with our exercise program to the patient now just to look at this thing how this goes into a vicious circle that there is a decrease in the oxygen level which causes dyspnea or breathlessness hence the patient does not work physically which decrease the exercise capacity leading to this deconditioning and all this lead to fatigue hence we have to break this cycle 
So before we start with the exercise program, a quick assessment should be done where you check the blood, play, blood pressure, pulse, respiratory rate, oxygen saturation with a pulse oximeter. What happens here sometimes that maybe a person may have a oxygen saturation normal at rest, but with physical activity, it decreases. And that's why we have to look at the exertional dyspnea also, or exertional decrease in the SpO2. Also SpO2 in supine lying and sitting. So check it with the, whether it changes with the position. Observe how the person is talking. What are the facial expression of any, showing any expression of discomfort? ease of changing the position and how the person is doing the physical activity and gait for checking their balance and unsteadiness. Because as I just told you that it may affect the nervous system. Hence you want to rule out and then plan out the exercise program accordingly. Continuing with the assessment is muscle system. Check the muscle power, the strength of the muscle, maybe by just using the Res manual resistance or using the handle dynamometer. Functional capacity, that is the aerobic capacity also, by doing either a simple two minute step test or a two minutes or six minute walk test and check how much distance patient covers. And with this, again, I emphasize the check pre and post SpO2, whether the SpO2 remains same or does it decreases. Cognition level by using the simple mini mental score or any other method and health related quality of life using the SF12 or 36. Different outcome measures we can use to check the patient's functional status. How are the patient doing their activities? So there are certain tests which we do. These are very quick tests without taking much time. Five times sit to stand test or ask the person to do the sit to stand test for 30 seconds. When the person is doing five times sit to stand test, see in how much time the person completes this test, usually it takes five seconds, or in a 30 second, how many times person can do sit to stand test. This only not checks the aerobic capacity, but it checks the lower limb muscle strength, then check a time, uh, or you may do a time up and go test, a very quick test, where you ask the person to sit on the chair and with the go, person walks three meters and come back and sit on the chair. Usually, normally, it should not take more than 10 seconds for the healthy individual. This is how it is performed, where person walks, stay three meters and comes back. And then you check for the dynamic gait index to see the speed of walking of a person and how are their balance. Goals for physiotherapy will be to reduce symptoms of dyspnea, fatigue, improve the muscle strength, facilitate the functional recovery, and improve the exercise tolerance. So how we achieve this all? By a good pulmonary rehabilitation. Now what is a pulmonary rehabilitation? As I say, the lungs are affected and we want to improve the lungs, how much the person can breathe in. And that's at the same time, you want to improve the saturation of oxygen and that is SpO2. And this we will achieve by doing a good deep breathing exercise. And if the person, person is dyspneic, breathless, you one can teach them the breath control that is relaxation and breath control. So. Of course, Dr. Saurabh is going to demonstrate the breathing exercise where we ask the person to take a deep inhalation using the stomach and take, breathe in, make, take a little bit hold for one or two counts and then breathe out. At the same time, we can do the deep breathing exercise using the upper limb. That is the person breathing while taking the hands up and breathe out while taking the hands down. So this will only help not only in the breathing, but also improving the upper limb activities. Pacing of activities, especially this is useful for the patients who are breathless. 
you have to tell them to take a good rest in between the exercise or during the day or when they are doing activities they should not keep doing activities till they become breathless do activities take a rest and pause and then again continue with the exercise or their activities of daily living we can use certain instrument to improve the breathing exercise these are very simple instrument which we use they are called incentive spirometer one must all how few must have seen either you have a tree ball or you have a one ball where you target the volume and ask the person to take a deep breath in where the ball will go up and this is going to give a good feedback to the patient and improve the breathing exercise and thus the lung volume another simple thing which we use is the inspiratory muscle training as we exercise our other extremity to improve the strength by using the weight this is instrument is device is used for improving the inspiratory muscle strength because you want to improve the endurance also and this is what it is going to help this is simple one which has a spring inside it is spring loaded and you load the spring and the per person is supposed to breathe in through this resistance and this will improve the respiratory muscle strength if the patient is feeling breathless or dyspnea we have a different dyspnea relieving position one person can take this at home or anywhere a simple high side lie that means you increase take three four pillows and go on your side lie which will help you in relieving your dyspnea or when you are sitting on a high stool you can again go down on your hands with a piles of pillows you don't have pillows just raise put yourself on the desk and lean forward or you are standing you are working in the kitchen or maybe you are working anywhere or you are out and you are feeling breathless just take any support and lean forward this will help you in relieving your dyspnea other if the person has secretion that is a cough one can use the secretion removal technique that is active cycle of breathing technique and autogenic drainage these are the technique which helps in the removing of the cough out of the lungs and clearing up the lungs again we can have different devices which will not only which will help in this secretion removal these are a cappella or a flutter this have a vibrating uh, bowl inside and plus it creates a positive pressure inside creating vibration which helps in the mobilizing the secretion upwards and help the patient to cough it out from the lungs so another thing most important thing those who are having low oxygenation where the spo2 showing low it is already found that taking up the prone lying position will help them in improving their oxygen level and of course the behavior modifi modification in the terms of motivation towards their exercise towards the life to spread the positiveness what we call be positive other thing is to improve the muscle reconditioning which dr saurabh will be showing direct demonstration where you make the person do the active exercise for the lower limb for the upper limb and for all the body that is for the spine also use certain resistance maybe you are can use the free weights or you can use the thera band the elastic band to improve the muscle strength in a later stage aerobic reconditioning by doing lots of aerobic exercise depending of the person's ability to do as we say we will assess first what is the capacity of a person to do and accordingly that we will be planning out that exercise program progress aerobic exercise you may can start from 5 to 10 minutes and reach 20 to 30 minutes depending upon the capacity of the person walking the best exercise if the person has a static cycle can use 
the static cycle not only will help in aerobic conditioning, but also improving the lower limb strength. Functional training, that is you want to improve the patients, as I say, this sit to stand will help them in improving their lower limb strength, balance, which we have to work on them. So improve the balance by doing more of your balance exercise with them. Another thing we cannot forget the this uh, depression, anxiety, and for that even a dance and music therapy is the one of the answer because this not only improves their movement but also will reduce the anxiety and depression. The movement and dance to support the intellectual, emotional, and motor functioning of the body. And the last and not the least, to practice the meditation because you need to support your mind by relaxing the body. And that's how Shavasana and meditation will help. Thank you very much. And I will hand over it to Dr. <clears throat> Saura. Uh, thank you so much, Razia Ma'am. It was very insightful. And all the physios that are watching is that they have also learned a lot about how the assessment should be done, what all red flags should be assessed before starting with the treatment. And for all the patients and relatives and general public watching us, they would also understand much better, better why pulmonary rehabilitation is important and why respiratory strengthening as well as maintaining a physical activity, a moderate physical activity is important for them to recover completely from all the effects of COVID-19. So thank you so much, ma'am, once again for joining us on a Sunday morning and giving us your valuable time. Thank you, Saurabh. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And uh, for now, for the next segment of uh, today's mm -hmm. live, we're going to invite Ajay Menon, who has been suffering, who got infected with COVID and started showing symptoms a week back. And uh, since then, he has been home quarantined. So we are going to demonstrate live exercises where he will be doing the physiotherapy, respiratory strengthening and overall exercise session with him. So thank you so much, Ajay, for agreeing uh, to join us today. Thank you, Dr. Sir, for having me here today. Uh, so before starting, just to uh, make our uh, viewers understand, can you just tell us a brief about how did it happen? What, what were your... Uh, early symptoms and when did you get uh, tested positive and what did you do after that? Sure. So this was uh, last weekend uh, when I was experiencing uh, quite a bit of body ache. Uh, I had a little bit of temperature at about 100, 101. And my throat also was hurting uh, quite bad. It was feeling very sore. Uh, that's when I realized that, uh, you know, it didn't seem like the normal flu. It could have been the normal flu, but I thought it was better to get uh, myself tested. Uh, so I underwent the uh, RT-PCR, the swab test, and it came out to be positive. <clears throat> right. And then after that, you decided to, to be home quarantined because the severity of the symptoms wasn't as much. Exactly. So the uh, you know prescribed duration for quarantine is 14 straight days. Right. You know, staying in a separate room, uh, separate to the entire family, and taking care of yourself. Right, right. That's, that's very true. Uh, to all of you, was the reason why we are doing this a live physiotherapy session? Because first thing that comes to, we have been interacting with a lot of COVID patients. And first thing that comes to any patient's mind after we uh, talk to them about exercising, I'm already so fatigued. I'm already so tired. How will I be able to do the exercises? Will these exercises be too tough? Will they tire me out even more? And that's the reason why we wanted to get Ajay along and make sure he is doing the exercises. And all of you can see how these exercises help in the longer run. And they are very basic exercises which are not going to put any strain over your body and over your lungs. So should we begin? Yes. Uh, so that before starting, uh, what I wanted to do is just check your uh, O2 saturation because that is a very important uh, parameter that we are going to check. So whenever, uh, for all the viewers that are uh, watching us right now, whenever you are doing exercises while being uh, COVID positive, is that you need to keep checking your O2 saturation often enough. And whenever while exercising, if your O2 saturation drops by more than 3%, you should be taking a 60 seconds or a 90 seconds break in between, and then you can continue with the exercises. So can you just show us how much is the O2 saturation right now? 98. 98. Perfect. Perfect. Yes. All right. 
you can remove the oxymeter. So before starting, just take a few normal breaths. Inhale and exhale. So in the first part of the exercises, we are going to focus on your lungs and doing the lot of respiratory and breathing exercises. The technique that we are going to use throughout this session for inhalation and exhalation is called as first lip breathing. So what you're going to do is inhale deeply through your nose, then make a O of your lips and blow out. So a simple way to understand this is basically smell the roses and blow the candles. That's how you explain it. Perfect. Now, we're going to add a three second hold and see how you're tolerating it. So inhale deeply. I'm going to count till three. You're going to hold your breath. Perfect. One, two, three. Breathe out. One more time. One, two, three. So as we can see, Ajay is very well able to tolerate a three second hold. So we're going to progress to a five second hold and see how it is doing. Breathe in. One, two, three, four, five. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. One. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Once again, breathe in. One, two, three, four, five. Breathe out. One last time. One, two, three, four, five. Breathe out. Perfect. So all the exercises that we're going to demonstrate today, you should be doing at least three to five repetitions of the each exercise. Are you feeling comfortable so far? Yes, absolutely comfortable. For when to take a break or when to stop exercises, so whenever you feel shortness of breath, heaviness in breathing, a slight lightheadedness. So any of these symptoms of them show up during the exercises, you should be informing uh, your physio who's taking the exercise or if you're doing them on your own, just take a 60 to 90 seconds break till the time your breathing normalizes. Next set, what we are going to do is are called as thoracic expansion exercises. So basically a thoracic cavity we need to expand our thoracic cavity, which allows our lungs to expand and our diaphragm to depress as much as possible. So idea behind all the respiratory exercises is that your tidal volume of your lung should be increased. So amount of air your lungs can hold in one single breath. That's why whenever you're doing the breathing while doing the exercises, it has to be deep inhalation, as much as air as you can take in and exhale out as much as air as you can. Right? So in first uh, thoracic expansion exercises, you're going to keep your hands straight and then slowly lift them up. While lift them, lifting them up, you're going to inhale, breathe in through your nose. So this has to be as slow as you can and keep inhaling till the time your hands reach and go back a bit. So that gives a slight bit of stretch over your chest area. And down. Perfect. One more time. And down. Very good. All right. Now, the same thing we are going to do sideways. So you're going to keep your hands by the side of your body. You're going to lift them up all the way up and all the way down. As earlier, when you're lifting them up, inhale, and while bringing them down, exhale. Perfect. Right now, Ajay has some restriction on her left side because of which he's not able to keep his elbow straight, but when you are doing it, make sure your elbows are completely straight. One more time. And down. Perfect. Next part of thoracic expansion, we're going to uh, try and stretch the upper uh, 
muscles of your thoracic region. So you're going to keep your hand like this. And then you're going to take it back all the way and feel the stretch on your pectoral muscles and the upper part of your thoracic cage. So you're going to inhale while taking it back and exhale while bringing it back together. Perfect. Deep inhalation and down. Very good. One more time. Inhale deeply. Perfect. Very good. Now, we're just going to take a 30 seconds break. Are you feeling comfortable so far? Yes, uh, Dr. Sir. All right. So, like these 20 to 30 seconds break in between are important. It just allows your lungs to recover in case there is slight breathlessness that you are experiencing. Because the idea is to just do light exercises to begin with and slowly, slowly you can progress further. So how progression works is right now, like we are doing only three repetitions. As you feel more comfortable with these exercises, you can start doing five, seven, ten repetitions and like that. Okay. Now what we're going to do next is trunk rotation so that the lateral muscles, lateral side of your thoracic cage is also stressed. So you're going to keep your hands, no, keep your hands on the head. And you're going to rotate like this. You're going to rotate from your trunk, not your lower body. And while rotating, you're going to inhale. In this, we're going to hold three seconds at the end range. So first observe. Hold it here for three seconds. Come back. Then to the other side. Try. One, two, three. Again, one, two, three, exhale and come back. Very good. Again, one, two, three, good. To the other side. One more time. Perfect. On the other side. Very good. Relax. Now we're almost midway through our uh, breathing exercise. I just want you to check your O2 saturation once again and see if you're maintaining that well. This is just as a precautionary measure you should be checking during the exercises. Yes, it's showing the uh, 90. 98. Perfect. So you're maintaining your saturation where you went. Great. Okay. So now the next part, we're going to do segmented breathing. I'll explain you step by step. So this basically, there are different segments, different lobes in your lungs. And we need to make sure that every lobe, every segment of your lungs is functioning well. The first thing that we're going to do is called as apical segmented breathing. In that, what you're going to do, keep your both the hands on your Yes, like at, at this area, slightly down, if you can. Okay, perfect. And now when you breathe in, you want to feel how uh, the, the breathing is going to be from the upper part of your lungs. So try to feel the movement of your hands going up and down. Breathe in deeply. Perfect. Very good. All of you, if you can observe the movement that is happening. So this has to be focused on the upper part of your lungs. Very good. Good. Now, next is the lateral coastal segmented breathing. So what you're going to do is keep your hands just below your armpits like this. Okay, and then breathe in and you're going to feel your hands move out. Very good. Perfect. 
That's it. Now next, we're going to do diaphragmatic breathing. So diaphragmatic breathing is diaphragm is a one of the major primary muscles of your breathing, and that is situated which differentiates between your abdominal cavity and your thoracic cavity. It is basically situated just below your lungs and above your abdomen. And through abdominal breathing, we try to make sure that your diaphragm is working fine. So for that, I would request you to take a position on the bed. Where well, you can just great shift down a bit and lean back on the pillow. Perfect. Now bend both your knees. So this position is called as a semi colus position, which is. This is the position in which your diaphragm is the most relaxed and will allow, this position will allow your diaphragm to move the maximum. So now what you're gonna do is keep your one hand on the chest, slightly up, and one hand on your abdomen. Now, when you're breathing, you need to focus on your lower hand, which is on your abdomen, and watch that hand or feel that hand moving up and down, while your hand on your chest should not move at all. So breathe in deeply. Perfect. Your chest is also, you're involving your chest as well. Try to limit the involvement of the chest and focus just on your abdominal muscles. Much better. Very good. Now you're gonna place your hand on the side of your, just below your rib cage, slightly above. And now try to breathe in and feel your hands move out. We are not normally used to using your diaphragm primarily for uh, consciously for doing the inhalation. So right now, if you see where Ajay is using his chest cavity more than his abdominal cavity. So try to work more on the hands. Your chest is still moving more than your abdomen. Your better. Okay. All right. So that's all. So these are the respiratory exercises or breathing exercises that you're going to do, which are aimed at improving the tidal volume of your lungs and overall improving the lung capacity. Now, in the next segment of our exercises, we're going to work on the muscles and the joints because when you are in isolation or when you are in home quarantine, you tend to sit at one place or lie down at one place more and that can uh, affect your joints and muscles. So that's why it's important, uh, frequent enough, at least four to five times in a day, you are moving all the joints in your body and just uh, encouraging muscle activity overall. So first thing that we're going to, I'm going to ask you to shift back a bit. Oh, all right. So far, you're feeling comfortable? Yes. Okay. So let's start with hand activity. So you can keep your hands in the front. Just rotate your wrist clockwise and anti-clockwise three, three times. Perfect. Just open your fingers and make your fist. Yeah. Next is bend your elbows and make them straight. When you're doing these activities, feel the muscle movement, feel the joint movement and do them very slow and controlled. Okay, perfect. Then you can just keep your hand on the shoulder and just rotate and and whenever you're doing all these activities, your breathing should continue normally. So keep inhaling and exhaling. Don't hold your breath. Otherwise, that might tire you out cardiovascularly. Perfect. Uh, next is just sit to stand. For about five times, you're going to sit in, you're going to stand in one place and sit back down. Slowly down. Again, 
Zoom. Three. Four. And last. Five. Sit up. Let's take a 30 seconds break. And it's important that throughout these exercises, you keep self-assessing yourself that how you're feeling. If you feel breathless, lightheaded, you feel heaviness when breathing, difficulty in breathing, you should take a break. You're feeling comfortable so far? Yes. Okay, great. Now we're going to do spot margin. For that, I want you to move the chair to the side and stand. Take a step back, perfect. And now spot margin. Just keep your hands at your waist level like this. No, no, no. So keep your hands like this. So that gives you a bit of a target. And then take your knees up to your. So now when he's doing these exercises, it allows his hips, his knees to move. Overall, his lower body is now getting mobilized, which is important. Great. That's it. Now just turn to your left, rest your hands on the railing that is in front of you. And now I want you to raise both your heels up. Can you just uh, tilt the camera down a bit so everyone can see your ankles move? Perfect. Perfect. That will be great. So your calf muscles help in uh, reverse blood supply, your venous flow to the heart. And when you're not uh, moving enough or when you're mostly sitting or lying down, that times of activity or contractions of your calf muscles drastically go down. That's why it's important that you're doing these heel raises and making sure your calf muscles are contracting well to keep the blood circulation going fine. This is something what you can do in sitting as well. That's it. Can you sit on the chair and do the same thing? Shift the chair back a bit so it's visible. Okay. Perfect. And just to add a bit of resistance, what you can do is place both your hands on your knees and try to exert a slight downward pressure. So this will allow some resistance to your calf muscles and the contractions would be even stronger. One last time. Okay. Perfect. That's it. All right, so those are the exercises that you're supposed to do. And apart from that, it's very important that you're moving around. So at least after every few hours, after every two to three hours, take a three to five minute stroll around the room. If you have open passages that you can walk in or a straight uh, line in the room where you can walk, just walking is also very important. And slowly, slowly you can go on increasing that time of walking. So you can start from three to five minutes, which is well tolerated by you. And, Oh, your breathing is not getting affected by it. And so, so you can go on increasing that time. So all the exercises that we just did, your respiratory exercises, as well as your general uh, muscle exercises, you should be doing them three to five times in a day. And along with that, a bit of walking as well. Right. All right. Yes. I hope this wasn't as difficult as you first uh, <laughs> anticipated it to be, right? Yes, it wasn't. I was a little apprehensive in the beginning when you mentioned it, but uh, it seemed to be quite easily done. And that's also maybe because, you know, I've already completed the uh, True, true. Process. 
so the perfect time to start with these exercises is within the first second or third day of your infection and that is when you should start all these exercises because now we still as far as research is concerned we are still in a nascent stage to understand what are going to be the long term effects of covid-19 on various systems of the body but one thing that is coming out of from whatever researches have been done your respiratory system is primarily affected by covid-19 and in long term uh, reduced lung capacity is pulmonary fibrosis uh, overall uh, lung volumes being uh, impacted with this is surely shown and that's why it is very important that we should be doing these exercises since the start of your infection and even after you test negative or all the symptoms have disappeared for next 4 weeks you should continue with all these exercises because as who has said it takes at least 6 weeks to completely recover from covid 14 days is the active infection period but after that for next 4 weeks you should continue with these exercises so there are no long term effects of covid on your respiratory system thanks okay all right thank you so much again ajay uh, for joining this today and we uh, wish you all the best and you're going to recover fit and fine after this very soon and do continue doing these exercises and we hope that these exercises are going to be helpful for you and you're going to recover pretty soon uh, dr sir a quick question yes uh, yes please four weeks after you mentioned to continue these exercises for four weeks after the first two weeks of quarantine are completed after that uh, then i can get back into a regular routine of exercise in terms of yes. you know outdoor activities and yes so of okay. course you can and for that what you need to do is uh, so for any exercises that you do progression is a very important aspect of it so whenever you think the exercise that you are doing is not challenging enough you need to add a bit more hold increase the repetition of these exercises and that way when you will keep progressing it will be much easier when you will resume your normal outdoor activities okay so don't just keep doing them what we have done today every day you should increase the difficulty of the exercises so that is challenging to your body and that's how you are going to progress and overall your symptoms are going to systems are going to improve right that makes sense Thanks. all right Okay thank you so much Jay and thank you so much uh, Rajya ma'am again uh, for joining us today it was very gracious of you for even after being in quarantine uh, agreeing us to come live with us and helping a lot of viewers who are with us today and making them understand how simple these exercises are and how easy it is to do them great i've been happy to be of help thank you so much and thank you so much Rajya ma'am for joining us thank today thank you saurabh thoi thank you very much Right. Uh, and thank you, Rahul, for managing everything at the back end. It was great help, and you uh, made it very seamless uh, at the back end. Over to you, Rahul. We can end the live now. Thank you, sir. You just stop streaming from yours.